Ableton. Ableton crew. Ableton crew. This is the Killer Killer podcast, and this is my guest, Toddler T. Greetings. Greetings to the man who's like, only around the corner, aren't you? Yeah, I'm up road. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the first time in the Killer Killer boudoir. Yeah, the, the heights. Yeah, the, up there the, with a fresh cup of tea. Thanks fresh for having me. Yeah, no, no, Toddler's tea time. Coming. Toddler's tea time. The Steve's man himself. So, <laughs> how'd you like your tea? Because um, I tend to have a tea bag in mine. Too baggage. <laughs> uh, Yorkshire man, so Yorkshire tea brewed for a long time. A lot of people think it's too strong sometimes, but it's a good tea, man, I can't lie. Really? I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm a, I'm up there, no, I'm up there. Yeah, with up this. there. That's years of practice, that is. Tea game, studio sessions, living on tea. <sighs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I see your T-shirt with the steez going on. Yeah. I know a little bit about it. I know what's going on. Yeah, it's talk to me. Sheffield, isn't it? Well, kind of, yeah. I mean, I'm from Sheffield. I lived in this area now for, I think, about eight years, which is West London. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny because I feel like it's proper home now. Yeah. My kids go to the school down the road. My Scary, sh- isn't it, when it suddenly becomes your home? Kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, like, because, like, I always thought Sheffield I'd never leave. Yeah. And then I, and then I did. And now it's like, shit, it's not my home anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is my area. This is kind of my community, I suppose. It is for sure. It's a joy. Because you've done all the carnival. I mean, you've been doing carnivals around yeah. these parts y- yearly. Yeah, annually. five years I've had my own sound. Mm. But I used to pilgrimage down to Notting Hill from Sheffield from like 2005. And it's funny because I didn't ever, ever move around here intentionally because of Notting Hill Carnival. It's just the way life landed myself. Mm. And then my studio was right in the thick of it too. And then I was like, bloody hell. This is good. I can walk home from Carnival now rather than having to get two buses and a train. <laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's sick. The yeah. round here is pretty much the front line when it comes to Carnival. I mean, mm. standing there watching it, you know, yeah. you, you're so immersed in it. It's, and fr- come three o'clock, you just don't want to be outside. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, like, where the tube is opposite your house. Yeah. Over, that's when a lot of people wheel in. Yeah, I meet exactly. all my mates there, we walk down together. Yeah, man. Sick. I remember it was like the last, this year, just gone. Um, coming out and just... Smelling the vibes, mm. but then all you see is feds. And I'm like, hey, I don't know. <laughs> they're not going to nick anyone here, are they? Nah. You know what I mean? It's... Yeah, yeah. It's, well, they're all here, isn't they? The police, they're like the time of where the tube is. Yeah, yeah. And then you just sort of, yeah. They're all in the area. Mm-hmm. So, so, have you ever done Leicester Carnival? I haven't never been to Leicester Carnival. Are you from Leicester? No, nah, but I went. Oh. I, I've, been, I've been. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's vibes. It's wicked. wicked. Yeah, I love Carnival. The thing is, the word Carnival is basically essentially worth a party, but it's just like... A lot of the carnivals, particularly the outdoor ones, which there's no payment involved or restriction to dress code or age, mm. it's just instantly a better party for me. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no, t- there's no sort of like ceiling of who you've got to be to get in financially. Like the way you look, the way you act, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like all free for all, and that's one of the things I love about not just Notting Hill, but all the carnivals I've ever been to. That's the thing, man. I always get the feeling that. It- because there's the added value of it being dangerous, and it has to feel dangerous to be a car. It shouldn't be mm. controlled. It shouldn't be. It just should be live. Yeah. And and do what you want, wear what you want, whatever. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, I think it's two million people come over two days. Mm. You get two million people anyway, there's going to be a few people that might not be the nicest people in the world. Mm. But that's the same in any any situation or city yeah. or country. So I'll never put it down to it being here. Yeah. It's just... It's mad, like, it proper pisses me off the amount of negativity you get from the tabloids around it. Mm. It's just it's just incredible, really. It's just law of average, man. If, like, you're going to get some idiots, you're going to get yeah. some injuries, you're going yeah, yeah, to even get some deaths. Yeah, you know? exactly. For that many people. Yeah, two million people in a space, it's going to, some shit might happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, regardless, so, yeah. yeah. So but when did it, where did it all start? Like, recently? Uh, yeah, like, what influenced you into, like, getting into this particular direction of music and world. Yeah, well, I guess, like, Sheffield was, like, up until I was about 10, 11, all I really gave a shit about was hip-hop from, like... Well, no, obviously, when you're younger, it's, like, Now 38 compilation and Top It Pops. Yeah. But when I got older... Oh, so it's baby. Yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, that type of pop. In fact, I do remember having a MC Hammer post on my wall, and he had... Um, like a mad, uh, like leopard skin printing on. Anyway, that's the next story. But <laughs> yeah, he's a, uh, yeah, when I was old enough to discover my own music, it was all <laughs> rap. It was all Westwood on Radio One. It was MTV raps. The it blueprint, w- man. Yeah, standard. <laughs> it was um, a, a, a community station in Sheffield called SCR. Um, growing up, boom, boom, boom. And then as I got older, beyond that, and met people from a wider range. That's when I started getting into sound system based music. Mm. 
And I, when I started raving, 15, 16, all the shops, all the raves, all the parties were in unconventional places. Because when I was growing up, to be honest with you, Sheffield was pretty shit. <laughs> Like there wasn't mm. an infrastructure next like Birmingham, like Leeds, like Manchester, mm. like London. It was like the venues were very sparse. The club nights couldn't afford to bring the out bigger acts that other cities could. So all the best parties were sound system vibes, but musically they were super wide. Yeah. So you would play techno records on a rig that was designed for dub. Yeah, or yeah, the, yeah. you'd hear like dancehall records next to house records. So yeah. that was when I started getting into Raven and then it was crossing it was cross pollinating. Yeah. Right? It was just the only way we could party, like. And that's what kind of set me up to be who I am now. It's dope. I mean, that, there was definitely a poignant moment, like a transition phase where, where all of a sudden universities got really on board with like massive lineups mm, of yeah. different. But, and I think some of it was because, you know, people like People Under the Stairs or yeah. Jurassic Five. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of backpacker type. Yeah. They'd come to a gig, but no one would know them. So you just ramp up loads yeah. of different acts underneath. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's what began, began the start of that sort of thing. Mm, yeah, it? definitely in, in terms of like that type of. Big events, yeah, for sure. Plus, like I say, there was so sparse the people that came to our city. Mm -hmm. It was locals that really I thought were the sickest because they were here all the time. Mm -hmm. All the local selectors and the sound systems were the ones I was like, these are sick. Because mm -hmm. we didn't get, like, you know, your big DJs and artists like other cities. So it's yeah. super self-contained scene. Yeah, yeah, totally, mm. totally. And can, going back to the hip-hop thing, now one thing that I know that I'm familiar with you for is... Uh, is your collection like hip hop t-shirts? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I kind of slowed down on that, you know. Since I had kids, I thought let me spend my money on something more practical. <laughs> you got some classic vintage. Yeah, I went through this period of me and my friend James just like being obsessed with rap t-shirts, and we used to do this thing called Raptober. So nerdy in it, and every day in <laughs> October we wear a new hip hop t-shirt. I think that's where I first really got to know you because yeah. I was like, because oh, I know this guy's from like a more kind of dance background. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as I saw you the hip hop teacher, I was like, oh mate, he's got some, he's got some knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, so he knows this guy. Yeah. He must know these guys from these t-shirts. Yeah, so, yeah. So I didn't know at the time that you came from the hip hop. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. hip hop is like, it was funny because I was listening to loads of stuff off the on Spotify, like random stuff like Group Home and old Mob Deep bits and all that kind of era. Yeah. I forgot about, and it's still like. And still like bumps, cut, doesn't it? Yeah, proper. And but I hear a record with some cuts, and I can't remember what it was. And I, then I thought I need. I, I thought about reintroducing that into one of my productions, which is kind of so, quote unquote, out of fashion now to put on a record. Yeah, yeah. But it just sounded so brilliant. I can't remember what tune it was. Um, but my biggest, one of my biggest breaks was working with Roots Maneuver. That's right, I remember. Because he moved yeah. to Sheffield, but his music to me has always been. Not hip hop. Yeah, it's yeah. just been roots maneuver. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's got everything. He comes from that era of the streets and yeah, yeah that whole ninja tune thing, yeah. which you were part of as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I signed to ninja tune after I worked with roots maneuver. That's yeah, the one. but he moved to Sheffield, and when we started working, it was like it was right weird because he was so from such a different walk of life from me. He's from South London with West Indian background. I'm from mm. Sheffield with my mum's from Manchester. My dad's from Chef. You know, it's yeah. like but weirdly when we made music, all our reference points were so similar. Yeah, it's it, mad. It was mad. Yeah. And it was like the way he'd do his bars and that and the way he'd make beats with me and Pop all that. DNA. Yeah, it yeah. was weird. It was like, oh, we're so different, but we're so similar. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, with, yeah, so that even that moment alone was like, I owe that to hip-hop. Yeah, man. 100%. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. I am... Um, I went in a studio, I think I was doing my elocution album yeah. around the same time you were doing that. Yeah. Or a little bit. Anyway, he came around to the studio mm. and I said, Oh, what have you been up to? And he goes, Oh, I've been around, <laughs> oh, I've been around toddler too. You know? yeah. I was like, Oh, nice. So is he doing stuff? He goes, Yeah, but he's always on the phone, always tweeting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the generational gap right yeah, there. Totally. Isn't it? Yeah. He was like completely pen and paper, man. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Or head top a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He did that a lot. Banana Clown as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I loved that stuff. Yeah. I loved it. They had a tune called Dugu Machine. Dugu Machine. Dugu. And when I first met him, I told him how much I loved that record. And he said, oh, that was just a freestyle. But that's, again, that's no. like, that's like, well, it, it, I think it is in terms of like the way they'd done it in the studio was like a vibe. Oh. But just, that to me is just like the Damn Jamaican himself. in him coming yeah. out. It's like capturing bits. Talking off mic a minute ago about Sweet Yairi and how he works and mm. pasting it together. And that to me was like a proper UK dancehall record. I loved it. So much. And I don't think he thought anyone cared about that tune. Yeah, yeah. But that meant a lot to me, that record, because I just I thought it just captured so much of what I loved in music. Yeah, ain't that the way? It's always, like you say, you dig a bit deeper. Mm. With with some of the stuff that comes out of hip-hop now, you're right in the sense that it's sometimes it can be 
so unfashionable, mm. it becomes... Yeah. Why, it, it flips instantly. Yeah, it, totally. all of a sudden it, it kind of is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I was listening to Public Enemy not, not so long ago, and they had this moment where they're phasing the tune. Mm. Like, and it sounds... It, at first I was like, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But all of a sudden it's like, actually, I forgot about I might use that. <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. <laughs> it's funny about modern rap, because, like, there's a... I've reached that point in my life where I just have to accept that certain things are not for me. Mm. They're not aimed towards me. Mm. And I don't want to be hating or bitter because when I was 18 and grime kicked off, I was going, okay, this was amazing. And my older was going, it's shit, it sounds mm. stupid. Mm. And I was like, no, it's not. And I've got to that point with some of the new school rap where I don't want to become that figure. You. Yeah. And you've got to respect that the youngers are doing their thing and it's punk. And it, they don't want me to like it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 32 now. I feel that, I feel that. You know that. what I'm saying? So respect to you, do your thing. Yeah. Like a lot of this new American stuff is that 6 9 kid and there's obviously mm. that little pump chute mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. um, all this real simple rap. Um, I like 6 9 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's yeah. kind of hard still. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he doesn't like, some of his beats are wicked, but what he's saying, I can't condone it as an older man anymore. I can't. Uh, it's because you've got kids. Yeah, it's cause, partly because I've got kids. You know what I mean? As before, I listened to the Mob Deep records and, and the Wu-Tang records. Oh, no, and, you mean. And the Biggie records. And they were saying the same shit anyway. Yeah, I just yeah. was not old enough to comprehend what it meant on a bigger scale of influence. Yeah, you get yeah. what I'm saying? So, But I just think it's kind of wicked what they're doing because it's just they're just owning it. Mm -hmm. like, even the way they look. They're not, I'm meant to look at these kids and go, you, wow, you look a bit mental. That's mm -hmm. what... That's the, you know, the young, it's like they're creating their own persona. It's punk. It's kind of like for you, 32 year old man going yeah, gray. Yeah, uh, I hear what Respect, you're do your thing. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was speaking to a friend of mine, I wouldn't say their names, but he's in the studio in the States and he's he's working away um, with a bunch of different people. And yeah. he he's one of the criteria was they got all these beats and they wanted these rappers to come in and rap over them. Yeah. So they were having a bit of a conveyor belt of different yeah. rappers. And after about like half a day, he had to go home because he was just like, it stinks of weed in there. Yeah. <laughs> There's red cups everywhere. Yeah, yeah. There's tattoos on everyone's faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's bits of hair dye. Yeah. And bits of hair hanging out of all different colours. <laughs> yeah, so like, I can't deal with it anymore. Yeah, yeah, there is a, sort of like a Lord of the Flies thing going on with a lot of... When when, people, when new generations latch hold of a certain culture, yeah. it does format its own look. And, totally, yeah. And thing. But I do feel like sometimes some of the rap kind of just says the same thing, but mm. the voices are newer. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, it's true still. And it, obviously now with this wave... It, Instagram is, is leading the kind of medium of it. Like when we was growing up, it was like Westwood had the keys yeah. or you had to get a dub cut or whatever. But yeah. now it's like they've got their own website that's really powerful yeah. via a smartphone. Total branded out. Yeah, really. so they kind of need to stick out to cut through, hence why they're really going to town with yeah. image and um, the ta the tattoos and the and hair. Virality and virality as well, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I read this 6 9 thing. An interview with academics, and he right. kept going on and on about viral. He wants yeah. to go viral, viral, and I was like, "Wow, mm. that's just how you lot bus." Um, but yeah, it's mad. And then the drugs that they're taking is a lot of downers, yeah, a lot of lot of Xanax and that type of stuff, which is again like you would never. Can you imagine? Big Daddy Kane going on about Xanax. You want <laughs> it's just the whole new no, thing. It just would happen, yeah. Yeah, and again, like I'm not condoning drug use or even it being into that, but you're doing it your way. Yeah. The younger, it's not do your thing in it. Yeah, totally. It's whatever gets you off. Like if, like you say, if your parents were into it, then you just it wouldn't be the nah. same. Nah, yeah, you don't. That's the problem do with hip hop. Shit. It's like with hip hop, it's it's like it, it's an elder form of. It's like what well, I guess. Rock and roll was to punk. Yeah, back in the day. yeah, for real. Do you know what I mean? It's because circulating. Yeah. And yeah, they're doing it that way. And I, you know what? I was watching a load of shit yesterday. Again, with 6 9 the Casanova thing, all them kids. Mm -hmm. And it was, even though it wasn't for me, I could feel the, the energy. energy yeah, man. And the, it was exciting. Yeah, it was yeah. like, bro, oh, you like doing something. Yeah. It's great. I've had, I've had Tino, Kamal, Marga, yeah. Bob Villain, all these newer cats mm. coming through. Yeah. And it's like the same energy. It's still the same energy that you can apply to any kind of art form. I mean, yeah. Bob Villain's quite punk, punk yeah. esque in many ways. And there's a lot of guys out there that, I don't know, particularly with the New York scene, like the Sosmullers and the Dave Easts and the yeah. Zilakamis, they, they, what I'm liking is they're getting the aggression back out. Yeah, 100%. They're that getting, New that, York yeah. thing. Yeah, that, that thing that used to kind of exist. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. It's definitely it's done in a completely different way to like. Uh, uh, you know, whoever, DMX or whatever, but, like, they're kind of, like, 
it's still the same fucking fire blazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's got the it's same It's exciting. Attitude. Props yeah. to him. But I feel what you're saying about like being too for it being too youthful, young and progressive for um for you to appreciate it. Because yeah. I sometimes feel that way, not young but more in the sense that it's so fast paced and that is what the genre that you lean more into, mm. which is the more the, the dance oriented yeah. genre. Yeah. Like sometimes t- you, one slip of the back foot, and next thing you're trying to chase. Mm. Like the turnaround on those mm. beats, I was saying this to Roscoe, it's like the turnaround on them beats are so quick, like yeah. two weeks window tops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick, gone, next. Gone. Yeah. And like, you know, next thing you've got like a hard drive full of stuff that's two weeks old, you already <laughs> ready to throw it, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the thing is with the beds for those tracks for these artists, they're literally beds, it's all about the artist. Mm-hmm. There's like, same in dance art, really. And grime, it's artist-led music. Mm-hmm. It's not producer-led music. Whereas mm-hmm. in dance, it's pretty much producer-led. You don't really cool have thing, like yeah. the voice of house nah. or the voice of, you know what I mean? You yeah. do sometimes, but they're always not there. Whereas the yeah. producer's like, hey, yeah. So it's a completely different in the way it's perceived. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Mm. I mean, there are a few exceptions to the rules where the, where dance music is concerned. I mean, I guess you you, got, you, could, you can call your chase and stages yeah. and yeah, and, true. And, um, and your prodigies, obviously. True, true, true. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of them now that to hold an anthem mm. within a dance genre, yeah, that's yeah. quite a tough call, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Everyone wants one of them. Yeah, you want to make one that you feel is integral to you, and represents who you are, yeah. and not just panic and yeah. get a top liner to do something to thus far get success. I mean, I don't like doing that. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people I roll with wouldn't do that. So it's really hard to make something really rooted in in your belief to yeah. be as popular as one of those records you did a you did a wiley remix right? i've done wiley remix i've got i've worked wiley a little bit in yeah. the past yeah me and rusk have done a wiley remix because i was on tour with rusk in the states and i got a, uh, a request to remix wiley from big dada and mm. i was like fuck i'm on tour mm-hmm. um I, me and rusk are together should we do it together I mean, we went to craze's studio bless dj craze what a g he let us yeah, use yeah, he picked yeah. us up got his mcdonald's in miami yeah, yeah. and we used his studio was he needed a hummer yeah yeah <laughs> man he was flossing in fact no we didn't have to do a hummer but he told me he stopped using the hummer because people kept smashing it yeah totally out of jealousy i was sick of which side of the, which side of the times you were really yeah yeah no it was it was post yeah <laughs> no, it was post hummer it was dj craze post but i'll never forget that he was so kind to let us do that so that's where that but i worked with wiley he'd done a skit on my album my yeah. latest one um I mean, it's Wiley. It's just, yeah, yeah. He's I just finished strong. his book, actually. It's really good. Is it good? Yeah. So you got an audio version? He should do, shouldn't yeah, I? Yeah, I want him to talk. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I was in LA and I went around Switches, you know, Switch. Yeah, of course. Around his house. And I was there for the evening. And, f- dude, like, he pl- he played your remix, the Wiley remix. Yeah. Right. Half a dozen times. Really? I swear to God, he, he loved it. Wow, how bizarre. I yeah, love it. It was yeah. like, I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. It's just kick drum, though. It's just kick drum. He loved it. Uh, Seems like minimal stuff. Well. Yeah, he loves it. Switch is a G, man. He's been really kind to me. Like, he, I met him, I don't even know, I met Switch. You're probably the same. Mm-hmm. Just, oh, yeah, it's just random. It's just Switch. Yeah. So talented. And he hooked me up with Angie Martin, who vocal my last album. Um, and he's always been super kind. He's just about yeah. the music, innit? Yeah. He don't give a shit. He wants a drink and a laptop. Yeah, yeah. That's actually you don't want to, much it. Yeah. yeah, you don't want a stage. You don't want. A, you don't want an interview. You, don't, you know what I mean? Uh, it's so nice to meet someone like that this day of age, where it's so yeah. image led and yeah. Instagram and whatnot. Yeah, and I agree with that. Fucking talented man. Yeah, right, talented. I've seen him make polished turds regular. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> have you been in his studio? I went to the one in his house in LA. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah. That's the one. It's almost like a you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just plug and play. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. Nothing else. No, no. Ears, nothing. speakers, laptop. Like, yeah. how can you get that out of that? That makes yeah. no sense to me. Yeah. It's an, it's I think he's just skinny, finished the Shaka Khan album. You what? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. What? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that, but fuck it. Yeah. No, we'll beep it out. There's going to be loads of beatbox bits <laughs> popping out. Yeah. <laughs> bang, uh, so, yeah, he, he's, yeah, which I mean, yeah, ready. Yeah, man. What can I say? Ready. What's going on with. um? With your sound system, you're like Shalama, because there was a real period where you were just knocking out festivals all over. Yeah, we did like a sound run because what I wanted to do was like take the essence of when you're on a sound system playing on the road. So mm. I never actually got to take the rig, which I would have loved. Mm. But I just took a lot of artists that I worked with and played, and then they'd come and jump on it. Mm-hmm. And it was me, Shola, who's just a friend from around here again. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Ceres, who's one of my kind of musical brothers from back from way back, and DRS, who's again. So he's a talented boy. What? Yeah, bad, yeah. bad, bad, bad. Mm. Very spirited guy as well. Very mm. like 
gives me a lot of advice without realising. Mm, mm, he doesn't mm. sit me down and go, hey, boy. Mm-hmm. But I'll talk to him and you really take it away. And I feel like he does that to a lot of people. He's a mm. legend. In, he's, he's a legend. Like, in Manchester, he's like the elder. He's like the, the guy. Ah, that's the, nice. The, the look, the people think, oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so we all went on the road together and it was fun, man. We just played dub plays. They'd jump, come do their tracks. We made some records yeah. together as well as the collective. Yeah, yeah. That was a while ago now. Real f- fun memories of that era because that's the first time I'd toured as a, in like a live or bandy song. It kind of remind me of Spit Kingdom when I used to do Spit Kingdom. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I used to Actually, do you was there at the Jazz Cafe. Yeah, yeah, that was sick, man. That was yeah, a moment, was man. You must have loved that show. Yeah, it's good fun. Mm. It's good fun. I mean, you know, next time I'll think twice about you know, being the promoter slash the the manager. Slash the, um, by the end of it, I was absolutely frazzled and everyone else was just like, I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. No, um, that's the thing we put you in events on. People yeah. don't realise. Killed me. It oh, does. Yeah. It's full on, man. It is. It's full on. It you forget on. why you've you done it in the first place. It's like you're an artist, really. And then you end up like counting ticket tabs and like checking riders, which is, you know, it's a merch store. Yeah, which is flesh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But then once you get on stage... Sometimes you're so exhausted by that, you don't really can't put in the same energy as you would. Nah, that's right. It's crazy. It's right. Well, well, you just muster it up. I mean, you know, everything else is the work apart from that. Yeah. And then when you get to that bit, you're like, oh, fuck. fuck." Yeah, yeah, yeah. From that, but. It's all part of the hustle. Yeah, yeah, it's all the hustle. It's It's got to be done sometime. Yeah, man. And it was wicked. It was wicked bringing the boys back together. Yeah, definitely. It was a vibe, man. It was a vibe. Um, so you're doing the radio stuff. Yes, yeah, so I've just yeah. gone from radio one now, yeah. Yeah. So in this day and age of like podcast, yeah. um, what's what's your take on it? Well, it's funny. It's, I think radio has changed so much in the last, well, it's since streaming went mental, really. I mean, Napster kind of changed it a bit, the whole industry. Yeah. But I think the radio was so used to leading, mm. it just had to kind of like reinvent itself in terms of what, its position is. And I don't know when Beats One came along, that was really frightening mm. to a lot of people because it was like, oh, Apple Mac are here with their massive check and they Zane, can do anything. Zane, yeah. Zane, yeah. Zane. Ah! <laughs> and that's fair enough, do you know what I mean? It's an intimidating moment, but I think it's leveled out now. And I've always think there's going to be room for humanity mm. in playlists and the way music's played. Yeah. Like, I, like I love Spotify. I love Apple Music. It serves a great purpose. But sometimes I want to press a button mm. and there's Yasmin yeah, Evans tell me what she had for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that humanity in playing music will kind of always exist. And even though it's not the main medium that it once was, mm. I think it, it will be prevalent in the, my life, particularly for the rest of my days in terms yeah. of how I like to listen to stuff. Um but it's just a constant juggle. Like I think, like not just radio, but the industry is just reinventing itself mm. every six months. Some it changes in it. Yeah, that's right. Like the latest yeah. thing is YouTube's going to start a, a, a streaming service. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got so many subscribers. If they turn them round, wow. it'll take out all the others instantly. Wow. That's what they. And that's another game. Like oh, shit, we got to get on that. Got now. Switch up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's wow. just it's, it's a bit wild west at minute music biz. But I think that's kind of good because it was controlled by such a handful of people for yes, so long time yeah. that it's like we're going to rewrite the game and I think that applies not just for radio but the whole spectrum yeah so it's good what's your what's your take on what's your take on the way it, the DJs mm. like because they're all you know DJs are also club DJs as well yeah of course how's it and this is more this is more of a a, a a question of like is it like that or isn't like that yeah like do you do you get given promos and are you sitting there thinking to yourself oh, this would be good in the club, mm. or oh, this would be good on the radio. Yeah. Like, how do you manage the, your choice of selection? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, what I've always loved about radio, from when I used to listen to it, Westwood yeah. Times, is that I feel like it's more open mm. because in a club, essentially, there's a gathering of human beings that want to have a good time. Mm. And once you know, you mean you know as a performer, there's certain times you have you have to deviate towards certain areas of your taste right um and i I need to make sure that these however many people have fun tonight because they've spent the money they've dressed up and i can't just play what i think is brilliant at that minute all the time whereas radio you're not in front of a crowd that you can kind of feel that you need to entertain like to that 
sort of instant reaction. Mm -hmm. So I've always loved listening to radio. I'd listen to one of my favourite DJs and I'd see him in a rave and it'd be a total different experience because in a rave, yeah, I feel that. they're creating an amazing atmosphere and playing records to please yeah, the room. Yeah. Yeah. When he's on radio, he's playing the new shit that's just straight out the studio and he don't give a shit because he's excited. Yeah. And I've always loved listening to the radio DJs in a different way to going to a rave. And when I've done radio, I kind of apply that ethos. Radio for me is about where uh -huh. I sit at one in the morning. It's about brand new, exciting music. And when I go to a rave, it's about just murking it. And there's two different yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And I, I kind of I respect that. Because when you, you know, like your radio show, you'll have like guest interviews yeah. from another country. Yeah, then, you'll, yeah. then you'll have an on the spot report somewhere else. And yeah. then you'll have the freestyle yeah, sessions yeah, yeah. and you'll have guests come in. It's like, yours is very much uh, a well-rounded package. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it has like, such a balance. You couldn't possibly put that in a, in, in a live show. Not really, Do you no. know what I mean? It doesn't work like that. No, exactly. Uh, it's not like I'm playing hip-hop bangers for an hour that I could then go and... Do the same thing in the club. Yeah, the radio show is it, 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 like say, it's rounded. It represents my taste, which is so bizarre in a way to some people. It's so wide. Uh, whereas a club, it's just about like it's just about creating a great atmosphere for the moment with records that I believe in. I also feel like um, if you don't mind me saying that you kind of spearheaded a lot of people getting back into the game. Like Roots Move was definitely one of them. But, yeah, and when I say get back into the game, I mean that loosely. Uh, like Rodigan, for instance. Yes, yes. He yes. wasn't really like prevalent. In any regard, yeah. outside of maybe the scene circles that he was, yeah, he was founded under. Yeah. But like, you kind of were, you kind of championed him as, we, as very much yeah. a, an inspiration and a yeah, of course. pioneer in, 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 in the way he should be. You know, yeah. Well, yeah. No, it was like it was funny because like I knew about Roddy from time, but I never thought it'd be someone I could access as a human because he was this sound system killer yeah. that went to Jamaica and it was almost like a film star or like a sports star. He wasn't a musician. No, yeah, he yeah. was just fucking Rodigan. Like yeah, yeah. He, all those videos on it, YouTube. Yeah, and I was like, going ah. crazy. I can't remember. When I first met him at Fabric, and that's when he started getting bookings on the sort of scene that I was on. Yeah. And just super graceful to meet him. I'm just such an honor. And then he had a compilation out from Fabric. So I, I, it was a great opportunity to invite him on my radio show. And he came on Radio One, and it was just a joy. I couldn't believe I was interviewing someone who is one of the best broadcasters in the world. Yeah, yeah it's just. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, really? Yeah. And then we just get on really well. And he's been so kind to me. Like, he put me for a lot of shows. He put, he put, me in front of people that I would no normally be in front of and vice versa in a weird way. It was, yeah, man. Yeah, it was an exchange of kind of crowd, I suppose. And he's always been very kind. He rang me the other day out of the blue about something and he just gave me loads of advice that I, I always is so valuable from his experience through the industry. Um, every time I play with him, he still knocks my head off. Like, I just can't believe how brilliant he is. I forget almost because he's become a friend. When we go to Jamaica with one extra... He's always been so kind of like welcoming to me and making sure that I know people. I played with him in Jamaica twice, which for me just is a head fuck. That is just like that's a head fuck for that's me. A snapshot, isn't it? Yeah, because I used where to want to be in your career. Yeah, and like, like that. I yeah. just like I used to say, I used to me, Rodigan was not. He's fucking Rodigan. Yeah, he's, yeah. Not, he's not with us. He's over there. He's. Too, and yeah. he, when he when we done that, he done like he was so kind and introduced me and then encouraged and he's become like a proper mentor. That's awesome. Yeah, he's I, I can't, I've got so much respect for the guy. And then away from music, he's just a proper good bloke. I love it when your heroes become like yeah. cool. Yeah, rather than the other way. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. he really is the cool. I could sit with him and talk about fucking movies and he's yeah. still as cool. You get what I mean? So yeah, 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 yeah. he's a G. Yeah, it's, it was a nice little era when we was playing together all the time. It's kind of shadowed out now with his tours and my tours. But yeah, but he's sick. killing in our books and yeah. tours and too right, too right, man. He deserves it. He's, he's mm. you know, he's a nice guy. I, I hit him up randomly like with a bunch of beatbox IDs for, for his radio show. Oh, sick. Yeah, and he just like got, he like got back to he got back to us and was like. Tell them, tell them I say thank you very yeah, much yeah. and uh, yeah, I'll be course. playing them on the radio show. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of vibe. Gracious, yeah. respectful. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah, 100%. At the, at the end of the day, if you, when you meet your idols, what you really want to achieve is like, oh, I'm going to meet your idol. Yeah. But when they're really fucking cool as well, yeah. it doesn't yeah, get no, it's better, perfect. No. It's necessary. But yeah. So uh, what's the plans? For me? Yeah. Well, it's funny. I did an album last year with this lady called Angie Martin, who's a singer-songwriter from New York, and she's wrote, like, some of my favourite records. She wrote, like, uh, Angie Stone, Wish I Never Missed You Anymore. She wrote, like, a load of... Um, an Envogue, Don't Let Go. Mm -hmm. like, all these amazing... Badass like, yeah, tunes. Yeah, like, just, like, real 
do you know tunes that you hear and you could, there's no faking them yeah, they yeah. come from the gut like. yes. yeah. so anyway I met her through Switch in New York she voiced my album it's been a joy we had a great year we concluded it with a show in December at Oval Space and now it's like I was like shit I need to make some new music yeah, which yeah. I've been doing anyway but this year's all about the new wave so I'm working with new artists mm. more and more so mm. my first release this year is with a girl called Rachel Fox I've done some production for this girl called Jay Dana Mina Rose, um, Young T and Bugsy, um, all types of nice. new wave artists that are coming through. And so you've got to check these artists out. Yeah, they're all bad, 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 all of them. So mm-hmm. it's about sort of collaborating with them. And that's kind of what I do on my radio show anyway. I use it as a platform to express what I think is brilliant, but give give a little stage to the new breed. Yeah. So it's just a continuation of that, really. Um, so yeah, that's that's exciting, man. I'm ready yeah, to just go. And I feel really good at the minute about everything. It's, it's just aligned nice. Yeah, man. Well, I'm looking forward to checking it out, dude. Yes, but uh, I'm gonna move in. I'm not gonna be staying here for too much. Where long. you going? I'm going to LA. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm wow. Addy, like, the Good next for you, months, man. Where yeah. you, do you know about where you're living in that? Yeah, I'll probably sunset. Nice. North Gardner, right Amazing. where my mate lives. <laughs> <laughs> Flowers, That's sick, man. Good for you. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's changed a lot around here recently. Yeah. I mean, you know, you've been here for a minute, right? Yeah. I th- probably same as you. You've been here for um, eight years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been here for seven. So, yeah. Yeah. You was yeah, it's me. mad, isn't it? Oh, but hold up, yeah, hold up, you stay a knife point. Fuck off. Yeah. Where? Down there, down at the down at the bus stop. Serious? Yeah. Took Shut. all my jewellery. Didn't take my wallet or my phone. Just your jewels. Just my jewels. I was wow. like, I'll come out, see ya. Like I'll be quick to the insurance. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> mad. Yeah, it's mad. It's scary stuff. But yeah, then yeah. I, I kind of put it out on the Insta messenger, just uh, you know, just telling people to watch just chill out. out you yeah. know what I mean? And uh the amount of responses I got back from people that had friends, I'm talking like, you know people that we know yeah. that have had friends that died over Christmas from stabbing. And it's oh, horrible. Yeah. yeah, It's lawless, man. Terrible. Like, it's so sad. Like, I, I, I just feel like it's just like now it's like just a, a, a sort of... This, years and years of, 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 un, of, of lack of detail and respect for certain communities, mm. you're seeing it in such a horrible way now. And it's like, mm. just it's. I think this last quarter, a month or two, Shocked a lot of people, really but it's cool been people, yeah. left. Certain communities have been left with not much help, and it's yeah. it's fucking tragic. And people, it needs to be sorted, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's fuckery. Well, it's it's the cuts, isn't it? The yeah, cuts, there's no it? coppers on the road. Mm. There's the, I would I do some work for a, a, a youth centre down the road, and they've only got enough money to open for three hours a week now. What? Three hours a week. Three hours. Yeah, like what the That's fuck? Rubbish. It's like there's a studio in there. Do you remember when you used to go to youth centre? All the time. All day. I used to listen to... <laughs> first time I made Jungle was at youth centre. Yeah. You know what I mean? I used to go in the disco room, like yeah. standard three hours a week. It's Dude. disgusting. And it's... Yeah, anyway, that's a whole different podcast. That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole yeah. different podcast. But in the meantime, I'm loving you living. You can get yeah, on man. about your business, brother. I can go and look after my kids now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, domestication on the podcast side. Mad. My man. Top of tea. Bless. Stay lucky. Mad. Cheers, bro. Peace. Yeah.